Hi guys, uh, today I'm going to be putting a couple of control horns into a composite wing, a hollow molded wing. Um, they don't normally come with the slots cut into the, into the irons for these control horns, so I'm just going to show you how to do that. Um, the tools I'm going to be using for that is a sliding bevel that keeps it at right angles, the line's right angles to the, to the leading edge. Um, some 5 minute epoxy, something to mix it with, masking tape, a knife, and the old trusty Dremel tool. Uh, in this, in here, I've just got a a drill bit really um, to to hone out the the hole, and we'll just get marked out where the where the slots are going to go. Okay, I've marked out where I want my control rods to come through and where the control horn is going to sit. Um, I haven't got any servos for this one because I'm pre-installing the control horns um, for a friend of mine, so um, I know that. The, the servo horn sits 5mm in from this edge, so I've measured 5mm in and come down um, to get that where that position is for the control horn. I've also done it on the other side. I've also um, put a piece of tape on the aileron, but you notice that it's sitting down a fraction. That's because when the aileron goes up, um, that can, you don't want that control horn hitting the, the, that top surface of that wing there. So you mark that out. So I want my control horn to sit in a little bit from the um, from the, the front edge of the aileron. It just so happens that um, these control horns are exactly the same size as the tape, so that's going to be my, my cut size. Um, you probably also, also notice that these are quite um, tall control horns. That's because this wing is for a, a plank, and you need a, a high control horn, and then you put your, your um, control rods low on your servo. It, um, just makes the plank go a lot better and gives you a lot better resolution in your control services. Uh, so let's um, go ahead and, and um, cut the slots for these um, control horns. As you um, probably noticed when I was doing that, I was holding my, my Dremel um, flat to the, nearly flat to the skin and then just drawing it slowly backwards um, down the line that I'd drawn. Once I got, got um, and then moved it backwards and forwards, so you're actually removing the material just by doing that. It's, it's easy to do, even if you try it on a piece of timber or something to start with to get the feel of doing it. Then, I, and then you notice that I stood it upright. I stood it upright because I can't get a little step, that last little bit in there with it on that angle. So I very carefully dremel that last little bit out, and um, which allows my, my control horn to, to sit in there quite nicely. Now I've got both horns done, um, which is quite an easy job really. Just make sure that the control horn lines up with the line, so that when you look at it, that it looks you know, like it's, it's in line with the line. Now I've got the control horns set in there and they're all lined up with the line. Um, we just got to make sure that the holes are the same height on each side. So what I've done is I've got a piece of card here and I just sit it down on, on there and mark where the hole is. Now that one's a lot lower, or about a mil, mil and a half lower than this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sand the bottom of this one to get it the same height as the other side. Now both control horns are at the same height with the, the hole that the control rod goes into. Um, just make sure that the actual holes, when you look at them, are in the same place and relevant to the, to the aileron. And both, holes, both of the holes are uh, actually in line with the, with the front of my, um, of my aileron. So 
the heights are in the exact same place and the same with the, the, um, the length wise, both of them are sitting in the same place. So now we'll glue them in. I've taken a bit of sandpaper and scuffed um, the end of the control horn so that the, um, and it's got holes going through it too, so that the epoxy is going to go through the holes and key into the actual control horn to hold it in place. The holes do look a bit untidy when you first take that masking tape off, so what you do is just grab your knife and, um, and run around the edges and just remove that, that burr that's around the edges of that, of that hole. Okay, I've got everything all ready to go now. I've um, put tape around the, around the hole and I've left, my camera doesn't show it that well, but I've left um, about a millimetre away from the hole. Um, that I put my masking tape and um, I will be mixing a little bit of glue powder with my with my five minute epoxy and my glue powder well this one here this one here is called Q cell it's um, a very very fine powder and, and it really doesn't give any strength to your epoxy when you mix it with it it makes excellent bog if you have a ding in the front of your wing you can put this in and then it's easily sanded back and makes a good strong hard repair. This is glue powder, it's a lot coarser and um, the fibres help bond the epoxy together and make it a lot stronger than, than it would be if it didn't have it in there. I'm going to be putting a little bit of this in there just to help thicken the epoxy and, um, and help it um, with strength, you know, bonding it to the odour on. Okay, on my card I've got a little bit of glue powder. So what I'm going to do is I'll mix up a little bit of epoxy. Okay, get all that mixed in. And bring some of that glue powder over into here. That's, that's the consistency I want it. So now carefully I'm going to put some into the hole to start with and get all that keyed into there. Same with the other side. And then I'm also going to run some up on the edges of this control horn just push that one in place do the same with this other one So it needs a little bit more in there, just grab a little bit more and stick it in. That's just got a round end on there like that. And what we do is just run around the edges of this. Just making sure that's in line with the with the pencil and this one
Now I've got a, I've got a little tiny square here, and I'm just going to check, make sure that, that is sitting nice and square there. As that epoxy is going off, just, just check your heights of your holes, just to make sure that they're all the same height. It just makes it easy when you're setting your plane up, because then you have all your control rods the same length, all your, your heights are the same height, you know, everything's all in line, so all your rods are the same length, and everything works exactly the same. It just helps a lot with um, trimming on that later on too, if you've got things more precise when you're fitting them in. My glue's gone um, rubbery now, so what I'll do is I'll take all my masking tape off. Now I've taken my masking tape off, sometimes you get a little little ridges and that on there from where the masking tape's been. But if you if you catch it early enough, uh, when your epoxy's still soft, if you do a bit of spit on the finger and, and you can um, smooth all those edges out and, and make it look nice. And I think we're looking pretty good actually. So there we go, you've got control horns in your wing. Okay, they're all gone hard now, so they're all installed. You can see the little gap on the front of the um, of the control horn there, because when that comes up, that, that nearly touches it, but that's way more throws it than what we're going to need on this. That's, that's coming up about um, 20 mil. We're only going to need about 10 mil on this on this plank. And um, for most importantly, uh, we haven't gone through the other side.